The following podcast was recorded on Friday, January 28th, 2022, featuring Sam Rines of Arbor Data Science. To hear the podcast in real time, you can sign up for a free trial at arborresearch.com or by emailing Gus Handler directly at gus.handler at arborresearch.com. You can also call Arbor Research and Trading at 1-800-606-1872. Thanks for your time and enjoy the podcast. Welcome everyone to our podcast series, Talking Data. I'm your host, Kristen Radish of Arbor Research and Trading. Our commentator today is Sam Rines of Arbor Data Science. Today, Sam will discuss the relationship between younger generations and cryptocurrency. Sam, to start us off today, what's the breakdown of crypto buyers by age? Well, it's it's, it's interesting. It's almost all 18 to 40, uh, call it the 94%. Um, with very, very little uh, happening from boomers uh, and anyone older. Uh, it's a really interesting breakdown, not necessarily because all millennials love crypto or all Gen Z love crypto, uh, but it's an, it's an interesting framework for what does it actually mean when you have downdrafts in the crypto market? What do you, you know, how do you think about that as we continue to move through uh, what could be a fairly quick fast Fed tightening cycle. What does that mean for the riskiest of assets? Uh, crypto being uh, by far the most volatile major asset a class out there, uh, well beyond anything of growth tech stuff. Uh, so what does it really mean for the crypto buyers of the last couple of years? What does it mean for crypto's adoption? Uh, and how do we put that into context of the real world, right? Because what we know is that wealth effects do in fact uh, have effects on consumption, uh, and consumption for millennials and Gen Z is an increasingly important part of the U.S. economy uh, going forward. So I think it's really interesting to dig a little bit deeper, and at least have in the back of our minds, well, you know, a lot of us quote unquote uh, real uh, investment people like to really kind of get a little happy when crypto goes down, uh, that it can have real spillover effects and it can have uh, lingering. Uh, effects on the global economy uh, in the U.S. specifically. And can we take a look at a couple of the charts you have here to show us? Mm. This is one of my favorite ones because it, it shows two things. One, it shows that millennials are generally more comfortable uh, than the rest of uh, the age populations uh, with digital assets and cryptocurrency in general. But it shows, but it also shows the very important uh, point that not all are comfortable. Right. There's, you know, there's the call it breakdown of nearly half and half, right? Half are really embracing it or are comfortable with it. Uh, and the other half are not. Uh, so while it is something that uh, millennials are generally more comfortable with than other age groups, it, it's not all millennials. Uh, so I think that's a really important part to keep um, to keep in context, uh, particularly in light of the next slide. And this is one of the slides that I, I think is worth spending quite a bit of time on, is that while crypto isn't adopted by all millennials or all Gen Z, uh, the uh, buyer tends to be more indebted than the rest of the population. Uh, if you look at credit card and student loan debt, th those are very high numbers relative to the average US household. Uh, and remember, this is only crypto buyers. And so crypto buyers tend to be more indebted uh, than the average American, uh, which means that when crypto goes down, you get a much more significant wealth effect potentially uh, than you would otherwise, right? The get out of debt quick card uh, begins to dissipate and you still have credit card debt, you still have student loans, you still have auto debt, personal loans, et cetera. Um, that spirals into less consumption very, very quickly. Uh, if you have a $45,000 auto loan and your crypto goes down 50%, you're highly unlikely to either go out and buy a new car. Uh, you're highly unlikely to call it uh, rent a bigger apartment, um, buy a couch, et cetera. So you can have a much more significant negative wealth effect from a decline in crypto uh, among those that are most likely to buy it. Uh, so I think that that is, an, that is a really intriguing uh, data point. Uh, Gen Z is not quite as bad as millennials yet. Uh, but they do tend to have more auto loans and credit card debt than the average American household. Uh, but Gen Z hasn't necessarily racked up the student loan debt of the millennial generation yet. 
Uh, so it's probably still going to be somewhat of a wealth effect for Gen Z, but it's much more acute uh, within the millennial uh, generation. Which, and can you can you expand on the potential spillover effects as it uh, impacts the whole economy? Sure. If you jump two slides down, and I think this is this this chart is also one of the more interesting ones. Crypto really didn't matter uh, two years ago uh, for people uh, wanting to buy a home. For instance, uh, in the fourth quarter of 2021, uh, according to the Redfin survey, about 12% uh, used crypto for a down payment uh, of their first home. Now, that's a pretty that's a pretty big number. Uh, it's not huge, right? It's not 50%. It's not 60. It's not 70. That would be that would be much worse. But it is something that shows that the spillover effect can be real. Right? If all of a sudden you no longer have enough of a down payment because crypto has declined, you're not going to, you're, that 12% is not going to be able to you know, continue uh, with their purchase of a home. Um, and if it's 12% for a down payment on a home, it's probably similar numbers for down payment for a new car or buying a new vehicle, um, being able to buy that additional couch or television, right? It's a consumptive decline and a negative wealth effect that could spiral into the overall economy. It's it's worth remembering, millennials were just beginning to come out of the basement um, and begin to get married, begin to have kids, begin to buy homes, cars, et cetera, uh, beginning to look a lot more like Gen X, beginning to look a lot more like boomers. Uh, so for millennials to suddenly find that their savings, which a lot of crypto buyers would say that it was part of their savings um, to have their savings cut by 30 40 50 percent in the course of you know call it two months is going to have a downward effect on their forward thinking on consumption mix that with a tightening cycle from the fed that doesn't look like it's going to be great for the riskiest of assets uh, we've seen significant declines across the tech space on the equity front we've seen high volatility numbers um coming across the yield curve um it's the fed's not likely to be a friend of crypto or a uh, friend of all the tail risk of the market um going forward that, that combined with inflation is going to be a significant deterrent uh, to uh, millennials going out uh, and spending their crypto gains which are quickly evaporating uh, on anything like they could have a year ago. That, that is something very similar to what we saw in 2000, 2001 with the tech wreck uh, for people who had a significant overweight there. Right? It, it was a huge problem uh, for their consumption over the next several years because you had a significant amount of savings evaporated uh, in a pretty meaningful way. Uh, you know, crypto and pets.com are two different things. Uh, but they're pretty much on the same risk spectrum, uh, right? You have a significant amount of volatility and you have a significant downside risk there. Uh, so different assets, different asset class types, uh, but very similar on the risk spectrum. So I think it's 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 worth uh, kind of remembering back to how consumption played out um, over the next couple of years from the tech wreck for any sort of significant, call it crypto crash. So any final thoughts for us today? It is very much worth paying attention uh, to two things. Uh, one, yes, this is the 94% um, chart that we uh, just pulled up. It's worth paying attention to how the 94% react here. How does millennial and Gen Z consumption evolve over the course of the beginning of 2022? Uh, 2022 is going to be an interesting study on what happens um, for consumption when you begin to have significant market volatility uh, that many haven't seen, frankly. Uh, so that's one of the things I'll be watching. I'll be watching it very closely, whether or not you begin to have more and more individuals come back into the labor force um, because of crypto holdings falling or because of more volatility in the crypto space. Uh, do you begin to have that 18 to 25 um, cohort that's really underperformed in terms of uh, coming back to uh, participate in the labor force, whether or not you begin to see some of those come back in, whether or not that, whether or not the McDonald's meme um, is true or not. 
Well, thank you, Sam, for your thoughts today, and thank you, everyone, for joining us. As a reminder, Arbor Research and Trading is an institutional research and brokerage firm. Our two most prominent offerings are Bianca Research and Arbor Data Science. For any questions, please contact Gus Handler at gus.handler at arborresearch.com. Have a great day.